Today, we're gonna to talk about whether it is too late to learn how to code. If you're watching this video right now, you're probably in one of two camps. You're either just starting out, you're just trying to figure out whether learning to code is the right path for you, or you've been down this road for a little bit, you've been doing this for a month or two, or maybe four or five, and you're kind of having those doubts of whether you should continue. The title of this video is, Is It Too Late to Learn How to Code? And we are in late 2020 right now, and you might have things popping into your head, such as, you know, am I too old? Um, is the market saturated? Are there too many developers out there already? Uh, or even can coding be automated? You know, people used to build websites as a profession, and now, you know, you can do that in just a few clicks. So it really begs the question, is it too late to start down that development journey of yours? In this video, I'm gonna to try to cover all of these points, but I wanna talk about some of the hurdles that you might face as you're either just starting out or you know, a little bit into your journey and how these play into you know, keeping you from moving forward with learning how to code. I'm gonna to try to keep this video relatively quick because I don't think that you need to listen to me talk for 20 minutes to figure this out. And spoiler alert, Yes, I do think that you should still learn how to code. It's not too late. There are plenty of opportunities within this space. Before we get into all those things that I mentioned, I wanna to touch on something that I think is really important to talk about, and that is the difficulty of learning to code. Whether you're just you know, contemplating learning to code or you're a couple months in, you might see other developers you know, breezing through things and creating applications and, and making it look easy. But let's not delude ourselves here. I promise you from my own experience and from you know, talking to other developers, this is a very difficult path to take. Especially if you are teaching yourself, you're going down that self-taught route, it is very difficult. To be quite frank, this is probably gonna be one of the most difficult educational challenges that you're ever going to embark on. That said, we're not trying to inflict pain on ourselves here. Developers are not some rare type of breed that you know, just likes to suffer through a bunch of you know, technical jargon every single day. There's gotta be a reason behind it. And for a lot of people, that is either to raise their current salary, um, get better at the job that they're doing, even if it's not in development, uh, get a completely new job or career, or maybe even just bring some idea that they have in their head to life. I'm not trying to make this video a huge motivational video, but you really do have to identify why you're doing this because when you're sitting down you know, at you know, 11 p.m. or something and Webpack won't compile your Angular application and you're on hour two of trying to debug this, you're probably going to need to you know, fall back on that why. and you know, dig deep to overcome that problem because it's frustrating. And while I would probably recommend going to sleep at that point and trying again in the morning, there is a level of fortitude that you have to have to come back to a problem that just doesn't seem possible to overcome. So long story short, it's difficult. It's really difficult. And it's gonna take some time before you finally get comfortable saying like, hey, I'm a developer. I know for me, it took at least I would say year and a half, two years before, you know, I was confident in saying like, hey, I can actually take an idea and fully bring it to life from start to finish. I know that's maybe not the most motivating thing to hear that it's gonna take a long time to do this and it's gonna be challenging along the way, but I promise you the journey is a good time, you know, at, at points where you're actually learning a bunch of stuff and it's really rewarding to learn how to code. So just accept the fact that this is difficult and do it anyway. The second thing that I wanna talk about is, you know, are you fit to learn how to code? Are you the right type of personality? Do you have the skills and the, the abilities to do this? It kind of fits into the question of, is it too late to learn how to code? Because, you know, you might be wondering, am I too old for this? Uh, you know, am I capable of learning such a new technology and keeping up with it? Now, I don't wanna be unrealistic about this and say that everyone should learn how to code or can learn how to code. There are definitely, you know, certain types of personalities that are not going to be great for this. 
if you like to, you know, be up and going and moving around and um, doing stuff, you know, working with your hands and stuff, this is going to be a little bit agonizing for you because a lot of learning how to code is just sitting in one spot for hours on end. But to the question of, am I too old? You know, do I not have the skill set? All that kind of stuff. I wouldn't worry about that too much because if you just did a quick Google search, I'll find you 10 people who have overcome any challenge that you can come up with. So please don't let that keep you from starting down this path. Sure, you might have to wake up before everyone else and, and get in an hour or two of coding before anyone wakes up, or you might be staying up late if you're a night owl. You know, that's something that I had to do in the first, I would say, eight months of learning how to code. I was playing collegiate golf and, and majoring in corporate finance, and there wasn't a lot of time on the uh, in a day to actually learn this. So what I did was just devote an hour every single morning before the day started to sit through this and even if it was agonizing to you know wake up and read through something that I completely did not understand, it was well worth it over time that I'd put in you know 30, 60, 90, or even 180 days in a row of an hour each day. After I graduated college, I did have a small little gap of time between um, college and the first job that I had lined up uh, to devote to learning how to code, but most of my journey has been alongside something else. And I think that that is possible for a lot of people. You just have to make that time, you know, either super early in the morning or super late at night to do this. But don't let any of these limitations of, you know, being too old, not having enough time, all that kind of stuff, don't let those stop you from learning this skill because the rewards are so much more than you could ever imagine kind of on the other side of this. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about before I wrap up this video is automation. Because this has honestly made me think a little bit. You know, you look at all of the things that, you know, you can do with AI and um, you look at things like the no code platforms where you can literally code a web app, something that, you know, took me, you know, months and months to do. You can do that without writing a single line of code. and Thinking about that, think about that along with the fact that you can make a website in a few clicks without any tech experience at all, it's a little bit scary. Not only that, but if you're trying to decide whether this is a good career path for you to go down, it can be a little bit confusing when you look at all that and you say, well, you know, hey, what's the point of a developer in the first place if you can do all of these things with, you know, automating websites and web apps? Well, I do think that some of these, you know, platforms that allow you to you know, basically create tech solutions without having tech experience. Like I do think that these are somewhat disruptive, but I don't think that they should prevent you from, you know, embarking on this career path or learning this skill of writing software. So here are two reasons why I think that learning to code is still a very valuable thing and will be for a long time into the future. The first thing, although maybe not so apparent if you're just starting and you don't know how this whole software engineering thing works, is looking at those platforms that allow you to create these one-click websites or you know, allow you to develop web apps without actually writing a single line of code. If you look at those platforms, you ask yourself, like, how were these created? Well, they were created using code. We're basically just taking code that tells you know other code how to write itself and you know it sounds a little bit like inception but that's kind of the nature of software we've seen this for a long time where you know the the layers of software just become more and more and more abstract as time moves along and this will continue into the future of course but there is one thing that has persisted over time and that is the humans writing the code have never figured out to write bug free software in other words, there's always going to be, you know, problems to debug within, you know, a software solution, even if that software solution is the one writing another software solution. To be honest, that sentence sounds incredibly crazy to me, but that is what's going on right now. What you shouldn't expect is to have the same job that someone 10 years ago had. So 10 or 20 years ago, People were paid top dollars to create simple websites with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Well, you do have to hire out a developer to build you a really customized solution. You don't have to hire a developer to just get you know, a basic small business website on the web. In other words, 
it's not that coding is going to be obsolete. It's just the jobs that we're going to you know, have in the future will be a little bit different than they were 10, 20, 30, or even 40 years ago. And this brings me into the second point, and this is probably the most important one, because when you learn to code, you're not learning a specific technology. I mean, you definitely will touch a lot of technologies, but what you're really doing is teaching your brain how to think and how to problem solve and how to you know, basically talk to computers. Everyone's journey is gonna be unique and you don't have to go work at Google to be considered a software engineer. You know, learning to code is a mindset. It's something that you can bring along with you anywhere you go and even if the technologies that you learn today go obsolete tomorrow, you'll still have that skill set to bring it down the road and learn those new technologies that you need to. Ask any software engineer, learning the first coding language is the most difficult. After that, you can pretty much learn any coding language in just a couple weeks or months um, pretty easily because you know how to talk to computers in the first place. So I've been rambling on for a little bit here. Let me wrap up the video with a little bit of a conclusion for you. But before I do that, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and gave this video a like if it's helped you out. Anyways, my conclusion to this topic is that if you're thinking about any of the things that I mentioned in this video as a reason why you can't learn to code, if you're you know, just stuck in that you know, endless loop of just reading things and watching videos and trying to decide if this journey is worth it, then I would say to you this, devote yourself one hour per day, whether it's early in the morning or late at night, and do this for at least 30 to maybe 90 days in a row. And if you don't know what to work on, go um, check out Harvard's CS50 course. It's a great place to start, even though you're not going to be learning you know, how to build a web app in that course, you're going to be introduced to a lot of the core concepts of computer science and just coding languages in general. The CS50 course is absolutely awesome and it's a great thing to devote like an hour to every single day for an extended period of time just to get yourself started. But if you want a little bit more direct route to all of this and, and really get started learning how to do web development, um, by the time you're watching this video, I probably will have a course in the, the video description on how to code. And this is just going to take you through absolutely everything that you would want to know um, from, from the very start to building your first web app. It costs a little bit of money, but it's a great way to support the channel here if you like what I'm doing. Um, anyways, in conclusion, I would say that for most people who are watching this video, trying to figure out if this is the right path or if they should keep going, the answer is yes, you should. So I guess to conclude this pseudo motivational video, um, I would say keep going and keep working on this. It's really difficult, it's gonna take some time, you're gonna be frustrated, accept that and keep going. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.